Okay, so we're back with the next 20 minutes, and things are getting strange. Uh, okay, so the fight scene between Shuya and uh, uh, Kiriyama or whatever was interesting. Neither one of them died. I think it was the first scene where there was violence in this movie, where things came to blows, so to speak, but no one ended up dead. I can't think of another scene. Uh, uh, what is his name? It's like Shikiyama Kir Kiriyama. Kiriyama had uh, the bulletproof vest on, I think, although he doesn't show it. I think he took the bulletproof vest from the guy he killed with the sword, and uh, and that's why he survived when Shuya shot him, because Shuya puts a bullet in his chest, and uh, Kiriyama just kind of laughs about it or looks at him like strangely, and then he shoots him a couple more times, and nothing happens. Uh, Kiriyama reloads his, his Uzi and uh, shoots the crap out of uh, the area and ends up hitting, he like winged Shuya, who fell into the water, and uh, he gets rescued by the GPS guy out of nowhere for reasons i don't know whatever <laughs> very confusing then uh the gps guy takes him to this lighthouse where there's like five girls held up hold up they're uh it's a really strange scene where they're acting like they're not in any danger like it's just in another just like any other day or something like that they're all ha laughing and happy and talking about just random stuff and uh it all turns bloody at the end of the scene uh they're all happy-go-lucky you know shooting the shit and all that and then uh one of the girls wants to poison the food to kill shuya who's injured in the other room that one of the girls nursed him back to health i guess again it's hard to tell how much time has gone by but he has a bullet in him so i doubt he'd be this patched up this quickly <laughs> but they, they they patch him up and he's got bandages all over him of course uh and uh they, they lock him in the room, right? She says something like, the other girls are afraid of the boys. They, they The girls think that the boys are going to try and kill them or something. I don't know. Whatever. So they lock him in the room, and uh, she's making him food. One of the five girls poisons the food because she doesn't trust Shuya for, I don't know, reasons. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it said one of the girls earlier in the movie saw Shuya uh, kill the guy with the axe, which wasn't Shuya's fault. He, the, the guy attacked him with an axe, they fell down a cliffside, and some of the axe ended up in the dude's head. <laughs> so it wasn't really his fault, but they were afraid of him anyway. So one of them decides to poison him. To, to, she takes it on him, herself to kill him, basically. She poisons the food, and she's like, "Oh, I'll, I'll prepare the food for him." And then she like dumps poison in there. And uh, the girl that was on watch, she comes down from the top of the watchtower, and I guess she's really hungry, and she grabs the food and starts yumming it up. And of course, she dies within seconds. This must be the most fast-acting poison known to man. <laughs> she dies within, like, 30 seconds or something like that. I mean, maybe if it was, like, injected into her bloodstream or something, but digested, that, like, in your digestive system? No, that's way too fast. Uh, I don't think any, any toxin works that quickly. But anyways, she, uh, she, she takes a couple of bites of the food, and then she just promptly spews blood all over the place and dies. And that's a catalyst for the whole scene. They all, you know, start suspecting each other, like, who killed her? You know, what happened? You, you, one of you are trying to kill us, and they'll, you know, pull out guns and start blowing each other away. <laughs> At the end of the scene, the only one still alive is the one who, who used the poison, ironically enough. She hid under a table. <laughs> the one who tried to poison Shuya hid under the table while the other ones killed each other. And, uh, for whatever reason, she ends up letting Shuya out, which is really weird. First, she wanted him dead. And because she poisoned the food, she ended up killing basically everyone, indirectly, but she killed everyone in the room uh, because of it. And then she lets Shuya out for reasons. I don't know. Uh, she promptly throws herself off the top of the lighthouse for killing her friends, I guess. <laughs> and then Shuya somehow, like, he's got at least one bullet in him, but the way they've got him bandaged, bandaged up, it looks like he's got several. Because they've got, like, half his body bandaged. He's basically in a, in a body cast. <laughs> But anyway, somebody crawls himself across the, the forest uh, towards where he was supposed to meet Kawada and uh, Kiroku. Kiroko. Kir whatever the hell her name is. So he's like marching his way through the jungle or whatever. And uh, Kiroko has a dream of her and Katano. That's the tracksuit guy. I knew I'd seen him somewhere before I looked it up. He was in Johnny Mnemonic. He was the, uh, the, the boss of the... Uh, the corporation or whatever, the, I don't remember what the name of the corporation was, but they were the ones after the, the information in Johnny's head. 
Uh, it was vital to their something. They, they needed it for something. I don't remember. Whatever. But uh, he was in that. He was, he was the, the boss. The guy with the, uh, the suit and all that. And uh, so, like, I know I've seen him somewhere else before, but I can't remember. But that's the one that comes to mind. Johnny Mnemonic. But anyways, uh, Kuroko dreams of Kitano like she knows him. So things even get even more, even more strange. It's like they knew each other when she was younger or something. And then, uh, just massive mindfuck, uh, Shuya shows up to where, somewhere around where Kawada and Kiroko are, are camped or whatever. She runs off for no fucking reason, plot convenience, I guess. She runs off into the forest, and uh, she runs into Shuya. Again, plot convenience. I mean, she can pick any direction. She just happens to run smack into him. And, uh... Katano shows up out of nowhere. The tracksuit guy shows up out of nowhere with an umbrella. <laughs> and uh, she's like trying to tend to Shuya because he fell down because of his injuries or something, whatever. And Katano shows up out of nowhere and, and he gives her the umbrella. <laughs> and he's like, you don't want to catch cold. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is this guy in the middle of the forest? For the whole rest of the movie, he's been sitting in like the command center or whatever with the soldiers, right? Protected by the soldiers. And then out of nowhere, he's just in the middle of the forest and hands her an umbrella. And uh, says, you know, you don't want to catch cold or something like that. Really weird. The whole movie he's been... I mean, he killed two of the kids himself. And uh, the rest of the movie he's been calling out their deaths, basically. Uh, who, who died, when, and all this stuff over the loudspeaker. And telling them where the danger zones are. I forgot to mention that earlier, but on the map it's like cross-sectioned to, uh, you know, different s quadrants or whatever. And uh, he calls out danger zones occasionally. And the way he made it sound, if you stay in the danger zone too long, something bad will happen, I think. I don't know. It was very vague. Maybe I just missed it. But uh, nothing ever happens with the danger zones. Uh, they made a big deal of it at the beginning of the movie. You know, that's why they have the maps. So they can figure out where they are and where the danger zones are or whatever. And that's why he keeps calling it out throughout the movie, where the danger zones are or whatever. But nothing ever happens with it. I mean, it's only been mentioned a couple of times in the entire movie, and nothing they did, they did nothing with it. Maybe it's not to that point yet. Maybe something's going to happen at the end of the movie with it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, really weird 20 minutes. I mean, it was really strange. The five girls, they're, like, giggling and laughing and having fun and all this stuff in the lighthouse, and then they just murder each other. <laughs> And then uh, the thing with Kitano showing up and, and the dream, the flashback or whatever that was with uh, uh, Noriko, I don't know what, the, maybe she, maybe it's her father or maybe she knew him when she was younger or something. She says something like, she, she tells Kawada about it, that she dreamt about him and she thought he was lonely or something, but it seemed more like it was a memory than a dream. I don't know, I guess we'll see. Uh, at the moment... It's it's the the when I ended it, it was the scene with Kitano giving her the umbrella. So I guess we'll see what happens next. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, so the last twenty eight minutes or so of this movie were interesting. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I would put it. Uh, right after where we left off, uh, the GPS guy his story arc, whatever you want to call it, ends with him finding the person he was looking for. It was a girl. Her name was Megusi? Megusai? Something like that. I don't know. Whatever. He finds her and then she kills him because she doesn't know that he wants to help her. <laughs> she, she says something like, uh, how was I supposed to know? You never said anything to me, you know? I guess he was shy when he was around her. So when he finally found her, he wanted to rescue her, but she didn't know that and she, she killed him. <laughs> she shot him to death. And then immediately after... Mitsuko shows up and kills the girl. So they're all dead lying on top of each other. And then immediately after that, Kiriyama shows up and uh, we have the fight between Mitsuko and Kiriyama. The problem is, uh, at that point, uh, Kiriyama still has the bulletproof vest. So they have their little fight. Uh, he shoots her. She sta slashes at him or whatever with the scythe, but it only hits the, the vest. And uh, then he ends up putting like an entire clip into her and it takes her forever to die he's like he shoots her and she keeps coming shoots her she keeps coming and then uh, finally the last shot she falls over not the best scene not the best ending for Mitsuko uh, I was hoping for better honestly it was really anticlimactic 
it, we've already seen the vest, right? We've already seen the bulletproof vest save people multiple times at this point. It wasn't really interesting. It wasn't anything new. But, uh, I don't know. At least it was bloody. At least she went out the way she should have, I guess. <laughs> and then, uh, Kiriyama, that was, uh, one of his bigger scenes, I guess. Uh, the, the, the guy that was trying to make the bomb that I mentioned earlier, he, uh, his, he sent his friends out, his two little lackeys or whatever, to gather the ingredients. They came back, they built the bomb, and the idea was they're gonna dr they're gonna put the bomb in this truck and drive the truck into the uh, the the headquarters of you know Kitano, the, the the people that set all this up. They're gonna drive it into their little uh, building or whatever and explode it. That's the plan. The problem is Kiriyama shows up. This guy is everywhere. I mean, every fucking where. Everywhere on the island at once. I mean, every single scene he shows up. But anyways, they, they set up the bomb. They, they like, uh, create the bomb. They put it in the truck and all that. And they're about to drive away. Kiriyama shows up and starts killing them all. <laughs> and then they end up blowing themselves up. So the bomb, the bomb was kind of a failure. Uh, their entire story arc ended in failure. You know, you see them early in the movie getting together. And then you see them when uh, they're planning to build the bomb. And then you see them when they're leaving, you know, to place the bomb to drive away, and Kiriyama just kills them. <laughs> so, they don't make it very far, and the last guy, the one who built the bomb, he explodes it and basically blows himself up. Uh, the whole place is on fire, and uh, Kiriyama's, like, stumbling around in the fire. Uh, at this point, Ka Kawada, Shuya, and uh, Noreko, they all show up at the same time to the, to the Inferno, or whatever you want to call it, and Kawada's gonna have it out with Kiriyama. He tells them to wait, and he's, he, like, squares off against Kiriyama. What he doesn't know is Kiriyama's blind at this point. The explosion took out his eyes. He, he can't see. So uh, Kawada shoots at him and then Kiriyama just starts guns blazing like spraying bullets in his random direction because he's blind. He can't see him. And uh, Kawada ends up shooting the collar and the collar explodes and blows up Kiriyama's neck. So the, the two psychopaths at this point are down. Uh, Kiriyama killed Mitsuko and then Kawada killed uh, Kiriyama. So the, t the two badasses, basically, of the bunch are gone. Uh, the only ones left at this point are Kawada, Shuya, and Noriko. Or Noriko, or whatever. Everyone else is dead. And uh, somehow they end up on the beach or something like that. I don't know how they got there. They weren't on a beach after they killed Kiriyama. And seeing as they were the only ones left, there was no reason for them to go running around. So, I don't know. Somehow they end up on a beach. And, uh, Kawada says something to the effect of, I played you guys, you know? The story with Reiko and all that was all a lie, just to set you up, and you're gullible, and, you know, <laughs> I set this up to where, you know, he could kill them, basically. He, they, they would uh, trust him, so he could just easily kill them and win at the end. That was his uh, plan or whatever. So, uh, you hear gunshots off screen. Should be a big, big glowing neon sign that you didn't actually physically see him shoot them. But uh, you hear gunshots, and then uh, Kitano calls it into the game. Uh, the other soldiers, they're like, well, we need to go find the bodies. And he's like, no, it's over, you know. He, he ends the game completely. And uh, Kawada is the winner at this point. Kawada is the winner. Uh, Kawada shows up, and Kitano is doing, like, these really weird exercises. He's got, like, this old, you know, old-style boombox thing playing... Uh, exercise tapes or something where they're like one two three four you know or whatever and he's he's exercising in the yard by himself i don't know i don't get it maybe maybe it's a japanese thing or some kind of reference or something i, I have no idea but he, he's doing exercises and uh Kawada shows up and he's all banged up and all this stuff he shows up and uh they have this little chat him and kitano in case you've forgotten kitano's the uh tracksuit guy he's the he's the head of the uh, battle royale guys the ones who set all this up so they have a little chat, and uh, Katano apparently knows that Kawada came to kill him. He came for revenge for Keiko. Uh, his collar, Kawada's collar, he like he disengaged it a long time ago to where it won't explode. Uh, and he was there just to kill Katano, apparently. If I'm understanding it right, he showed up to these games just to kill Katano at the end. But uh, before he can do that, Shuya and... Uh, Noriko show up, or Noriko, or however they say it. They both show up, and uh, they've got guns pointed at Katano. And Katano, apparently, his life is such shit that he wants Noriko to kill him. Again, the ending is really weird. It's really 
strange. I, I don't I don't think I understood it all, but he says something like, if he's gonna die, he wants it to be Nareko. Her. He wants it to be her that kills him, or something like that. And uh, he pulls a gun on them, and they shoot him dead. Well, not shoot him dead, but they shoot him a lot of times. And uh, the gun he had was a squirt gun. It was a water gun. As he's falling over from the bullets, he, like, squirts the gun at them. So, uh, apparently he, he never really meant to harm them, I guess, was the point of that. That's why it was a water gun, not a real gun. I don't know. And then there's this really weird scene where he's been shot, like, 15 times. And he stands up and walks over to the couch and answers the phone and talks to his daughter. Earlier in the movie, his daughter said something like, don't even bother coming home or something like that. It was really weird because I don't know why she said it. Maybe it's because he's part of the Battle Royale thing. Or maybe he's just a really bad father or something. I don't know, but she says something like, don't bother coming home. And and uh, now he wants to die, I guess. I don't know, whatever. So they shoot him and he, he takes the phone call. And he tells her something like, she has to take responsibility for what she said. Because he's dying now, I guess. So he's kind of blaming her for it. <laughs> I don't know, it's really weird. Really, really weird. Uh, after that, they, they get on this boat, and they're going back to civilization, I guess. They were on an island the whole movie. And uh, Kawada dies on the boat. He says, uh, his last words were, I understand what Keiko meant. Uh, and then he dies before he can tell Shuya and Nareko what it was. But a monologue or, you know, voiceover or whatever continues his thoughts for us, for the audience. And he says something like, True friends. That's what she meant. Uh, she thanked him for being a true friend, I guess, or something. I don't know. Really, again, really weird. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me, especially in the context of the, the scene that we saw with them, where they basically tried to kill each other. It doesn't really make any sense, but whatever. Uh, these two end up, I guess they're the de facto winners, because Kawada's now dead. But uh, they end up back in civilization, and the last scene of the movie is them at some vending machine, and it's talking about how Nuriko said goodbye to her parents, and she went and got uh, the knife. Uh, the the His friend earlier in the movie, why he wanted revenge, the, the one that got killed right at the beginning of the movie, she found his knife somewhere. It was like a butterfly knife. And uh, he says something like, we now know how to kill, and you know if we have to, we'll, you know, we'll kill to protect ourselves, or something like that. Whatever. Really fucking weird movie. Uh, I don't even know where to start as far as, like... <laughs> How convoluted the plot is. There's so many plot threads in this movie. I mean, obviously there's 40 different students. And if they want to give them any kind of, you know, character to them at all, they're going to have to have their own little story segments. But, oh my god, so much of this stuff in this movie is just all over the place. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different romances. Like, the GPS guy and Mitsuye, Mitsuye, whatever the hell, the girl he was trying to find, uh... Gogo, whatever her name was, uh, I think her name was Megumi, her and the uh, the guy that ran track with her, or whatever, uh, the the different crushes that didn't actually find each other, like, uh, Mitsuko killed a, the, the girl that she took the, the stun gun from, she killed her before she could find her crush, uh, the one that she wanted to find, his name, he was the guy who was building the bomb, the only reason I know that is because I recognize the name, his name was like Nurami, or New, some, something like that, so... At the very beginning of the movie, she dies, and she's looking at pictures of the guy that she wants to find. You know, she's got a crush on him. Mitsuko kills her before she can. <laughs> and the bomb guy never even bats an eye. He, he never even mentions her. <laughs> so, it's weird. They, they all have their own little romance romances going throughout the movie, but they're also all, for the most part, trying to kill each other. It's really strange. <laughs> and then, uh, what the hell happened to, with Kitano? Uh, why did he hate himself so much and want to die? Was it the Battle Royale thing? Because he didn't act like it throughout the movie. He didn't act like it was bothering him at all. Uh, as he's calling out the names of the dead kids, he's like snacking on cookies and like nonchalantly like taking the, like individually taking these cookies out of this little box and like snacking on them. And then uh, at the end of the movie, after the phone call with his, his daughter while he's dying, he's like, it's the last cookie. And he sticks it in his mouth and finally dies <laughs> after being shot like I don't know how many times. But yeah, Kitano was just... His entire character was just really weird. Why did he go out and bring her an umbrella? What the hell did that have to do with anything? I mean, I know he was obsessed with her, but why? Why was he obsessed with her? It, it He never explained why she was special or whatever. What was special about her? I don't know. 
his whole character was just strange. And uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the scenes were just weird. The one in the lighthouse was just really strange. Where they they're all happy and you know friends. They're they're literally friends. They're all buddies. They're like a clique of uh, the girls that are all friends. And then they just all kill each other at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Because uh, one of them drops dead, and they all like accuse each other, and they pull guns and just blow each other away. So that scene was really strange. Uh, I don't know, just the movie in general. I liked Kawada's character. His character was really cool. He turns out to be like their savior, but at the same time, he's played the game before and he can kill people. I mean, he he proves it right when he meets them. He kills the guy, and then uh, later on he betrays them, but it's also not real because obviously they're not dead. And then at the end. Where, uh, where, you know, he finds out, he finally figures out what happened with Keiko. I still don't understand it. I thought they were, like, supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever. That's the way they made it sound, right? What does that have to do with being true friends? She thanked him for being a true friend? <laughs> uh, does, do true friends shoot you? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, and she tried to shoot him, too, by the way. She wounded him. She tried to kill him first, then he shot her back and killed her. What does that have to do with being true friends? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but... Overall, I like this character. Shuji's character was a little obvious. His entire... Everything to do with his character was trying to protect her. That's it. There was a scene where... Uh, his father killed himself or something. And uh, there was a scene where he was talking to his friend. I think his name was Nobu. His friend that died at the beginning of the movie. He had a little scene where he was talking to him. And Nobu had a crush on uh, Noriko. But... Uh, even throwing in those extra scenes for Shuya, they didn't really add anything because his character was solely based around protecting her. That's it. He was basically a babysitter for her. The entire movie. They never really did... Ow. Damn it. Anything else uh, with that character. So, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, her character, again, very one-dimensional. She's just there to be protected. <laughs> and then she's also the focal point of Kitano's obsession for absolutely no reason. I have no idea why. Maybe he just liked the way she looked or something. I don't know. Uh, there's no real interaction between the two of them, except for that one scene where he hands her the umbrella, which they don't say much. In fact, I don't think she says anything to him at all. Now that I think about it, he talks to her. I think there's just that one line where he's like, you know, you don't want to catch a cold or whatever. So, really weird. A lot of really strange characters and, you know, just scenes in general. <laughs> I have no idea. I still liked the movie. Fundamentally, I liked the movie. Uh, it got going really quickly, and it never really stopped. It, like, ten minutes into the movie, it was, it was you know, sprinting, and it never really stopped until the very end. So, it was, you know, it was a, it was a ride the entire way through. And there was always something interesting going on. Something to think about, even if it didn't make any sense. There was always something. Uh, there's a lot of interesting characters, like I said... I didn't even like these two characters much. They're just too one-dimensional, but uh, Mitsuko was a badass. She had some really cool lines where she was uh, she was basically playing innocent, and then she'd take someone out. She was, uh, you know, conning them or whatever. Uh, Kiriyama's character was a badass. He's just running around murdering people everywhere. Didn't matter if they were armed or, or weren't or, you know, what they said. It didn't matter. He would kill anyone who came across his path. Uh, Kawada's character was pretty cool. It's too bad they didn't do anything with the military guys. The, the the Battle Royale guys. You see them in their little command center every once in a while, but they're never really a part of the story. Even Kitana wasn't much part of the story except for the very beginning, where he killed those two students. After that, you see him every once in a while, but he's not really doing anything to move the story along. He's just there. So, the Battle Royale guys, <laughs> other than monitoring you know, when people die, they don't really have much purpose to, to the show basically they could have set up the the beginning where they put the colors on them and gave them the information and then they could have just left that's how little they added to the story they literally could have just left the island at that point so yeah they could have done more with them i don't know whatever still like i said pretty good movie uh it didn't have very many gory parts if you're in it for that it's not like people were getting disemboweled or you know stuff like that uh one girl gets shot in the neck which really isn't that gory. Uh, Mizuko kills one with her scythe. She, like, cuts her throat. Really wasn't that gory. There's a little bit of, like, ridiculous, you know, blood spurt thing that they do in, the, in like, Japanese movies where it's like a fountain of blood or whatever. There was one of those, a couple of those scenes, but it's just fake blood. 
uh, I can't think of a single really gory scene. There's a scene where the, a guy gets the axe stuck in his head, but again, you don't really see anything. You know, it might as well be a fake axe with, like, you know, a circular cutout where the guy's head is and they just glue it on. You don't actually see anything. It's not like his head opens up. So, I don't know. There really wasn't much gore if that's what you're here for. Let's see. There wasn't any nudity, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Uh, I think there was one scene where... I think it was, like, Mitsuko, where maybe her shirt's wet or something, and you can kind of see an outline, but that's really it. Uh, what else? There wasn't much cursing, although it was all in Japanese. It is subtitled, by the way. So, I have no idea. Maybe, maybe the translation took out the cursing, but... I don't know. Whatever. Uh... I think that's it for as like as far as the rating stuff goes there really wasn't much for this be to be like an R type movie I mean people did die but it wasn't anything I haven't seen before it was all pretty much benign I guess <laughs> uh, but yeah I mean I liked it I liked it I liked the premise I liked the way they handled it I liked how all the characters were interesting and had their own thing going uh, there was always something to think about you know I mean I don't know it was just it was really good I liked it I don't know what I'd give it. Maybe a, maybe like an eight or a nine, out of ten, possibly. Uh, I didn't have very many problems with it. I don't know who the hell this was, from the beginning of the movie. Maybe she was from the last uh, battle royale, the last game. Maybe that's what it was. Cause this scene does not come back later in the movie. It's only in the beginning. So yeah, she must have been the winner from the last uh, battle. I guess. I don't know. Uh, she doesn't look like anyone in the cast except maybe her a little bit. But now that I'm looking at her, f no, not really. I don't, I have no idea who she was, honestly. Like I said, there's a really, tons of confusing moments. I completely forgot about that scene. Uh, the, that was the guy with the bulletproof vest. And then there's the scene with the, the, the crazy happy lady that's talking about how they're gonna have to kill each other. She's like bouncing around and like bubbly as hell and ridiculous but uh yeah uh when when kiriyama kills the guy with the bulletproof vest uh he shoots him a bunch of times and the guy's like oh my vest saved me and then kiriyama jumps down and like slashes his head off i guess uh with the sword uh right after that he finds kawada shuya and Noro uh noriko Nori i can never get her name right he finds those three in some kind of shack and he throws this guy's severed head in there with the grenade in his mouth <laughs> So the whole shot gets blown up. Uh, that might have been the goriest scene, although there's not really much gore. It's just like a fake head that's, you know, cut. But, uh, yeah, he like, throws the guy's head in there with, with, like, the grenade stuck in his mouth. But, uh, I don't know. Interesting movie. I don't know what else to say. Are these the weapons? Oh, they are. Let's see. Pistol. That's some kind of rope. I never saw that. The crossbow. already talked about that. The GPS. The poison. Right, from when she tried to kill Shuya. The knife. Who had the knife? Oh, Gogo. Go Gogo -Go had the knife. I think her name was Megumi in in the in the movie. But I don't know, I'm not for sure. There's too many, you know, Japanese names in this movie for me to keep them all straight. Uh the Uzi, that's what uh Kiriyama had. That's the bulletproof vest that the guy had that he thought was gonna save him. Uh Kiriyama took it off him and he used it multiple times throughout the movie to save his life. Uh, he would have died from Shuya. He would have died from uh, Mitsuko when she slashed him. Uh, he would have died at the very end when the bomb guy shot at him. So yeah, the, the, the bulletproof vest saved him at least like three times. Uh, the binoculars are what Noriko had, but she never uses them. They might as well not even have been there. She, she like takes them out when she first opens the pack, and that's it. I don't even think you ever see them again. So no, they don't even make use of them. Uh, the pickaxe, no one had a pickaxe. I don't even know what this is. What is that? I can't even tell what that is. Maybe a knife or something? Uh, the baseball bat. Someone had a baseball bat, but I don't think they used it. I remember seeing a baseball bat, but I don't remember them actually using it on anyone. The nunchucks, like I said, he just tosses them aside. Someone had a fork? <laughs> we never saw the fork in the movie, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I never saw the fork. Uh, another pistol, another pistol. There was a bunch of different pistols, like I said. Uh, the fan, that's what Kiriyama started out with. Probably the most useless weapon out of all of them. Yeah, they, they, by far, the most useless weapon out of all of them. What the hell are you going to do with a paper fan? 
I mean, it's completely useless. But he, he, it didn't matter because he was the biggest badass of the bunch, you know? The first group he ran into, he just killed them all and took their guns. So, another gun. That was called a shotgun. Made very good use of that. Coat hanger. I don't remember a coat hanger. I don't remember a machete either. I wouldn't remember that. Uh, what is this? Oh, the stun gun. Right, yeah. The one that uh, Mitsuko killed. She took that and used it on uh, the the third person she killed. Whenever the girl pulled a gun on her and she like shocked the gun. And that shocked the girl and she dropped the gun. So yeah, the uh, the stun gun. I don't remember seeing a knife, that knife. Like a kitchen knife. I remember seeing this like flip out knife. And I remember seeing the uh, butterfly knife. But I don't remember this kind of knife. That was the pot lid that Shuya had. Uh, it actually saved his life. When the guy came at him with the axe, he blocked it with the, with the pot lid. <laughs> so the pot lid was basically a shield, is what it was. So yeah, it actually saved him. Uh, that was Mitsuko's weapon, and she used it very, very well throughout the movie. Killed a bunch of people. Uh, another gun, the axe. That's The guy with the axe, Shuya blocks it with a shield, they fall down a hill, and then the axe ends up in, his, in like the top of his head. I don't know, whatever. Uh, the grenades, he takes them from the people and then throws them in that shack to try to blow up Shuya and Kabuto and all them. I don't remember where he got the sword, but he kills the guy with the bulletproof vest with the sword. It, it didn't show how he got the sword, though. Another pistol, and then the dumbass girls with the, with the bullhorn or whatever. I'd forgotten about them. I didn't even mention them. They were, like, like up on this hill hilltop or something somewhere, and they're using the bullhorn to call out for people to join them. They, they, they want to be friends or whatever. They, they're like, they don't want to be a part of the game, you know. They, we can all work together and all this stuff, and they're, like, using the bullhorn... And, uh, Kiriyama immediately shows up and murders them. <laughs> He's, uh, Shuya's, like, calling out to them. He's, like, he wants to go help them or whatever. And Kabuto's, like, no, you can't. They're, they're, you know, they're being too loud. They're, they're a target now. You can't go over there. And, uh, sure enough, Kiriyama walks up behind him and just sprays them full of bullets. And then one of them, while one of them's dying on the ground, he, like, turns on the bullhorn to her, her, you know, her lips. And you can hear her cries of, you know, death rattle. It, through the bullhorn, everyone can hear it. So yeah, Kiriyama was an ir evil bastard. He was he was terrible. <laughs> he he was just straight up nasty. He by far killed the most people. He he probably had like half the deaths credited to him. I mean, there was like forty two people total. He probably killed twenty of them. He he was by far the best. And then the second was uh, Mitsuko. She probably killed five or six or something like that. I'm trying to think. She killed the girl with the stun gun. She killed the girl with the gun. She killed uh, Gogo, or Megumi, or whatever her name was. She killed the girl that killed the GPS guy. I keep calling him the GPS guy. I don't know what his name was. So that's four. Uh, who else? That might have been it. Oh, no, there's a scene where it's like a, a flash-forward scene where it's showing who has died. She killed two other people. For some reason, they were naked. I, I don't know. You didn't actually see anything, but, you know, I, they were, like, turned over or something was on top of them or whatever, but technically they didn't have any clothes on. She killed both of them, so that's six right there. And then it showed uh, Kiriyama killing a couple more people, too. But you didn't actually see the scene. It was just him walking away as they were dead. Same for Mitsuko with the naked guys or whatever. Maybe she tried to seduce them or something and, th and then kill them? I, I don't know, but... Uh, that's six for her. I think that was it. I think she killed six. But, uh, yeah, they were definitely the two most accomplished killers of the bunch. I don't know what else to say about this movie. It's worth watching. I, I would I, I would recommend it, definitely. It is the cooler version of Hunger Games. Whereas Hunger Games is more about whiny, pansy, angsty crap, and the beginning was just so much useless fluff, garbage... Uh, just so much wasted potential. This is how you do it. This was a good movie. This movie didn't pull any punches, you know? I mean, it took the premise and it ran with it. Straight up. And it was good. I liked it quite a bit. I think, yeah, that's when Kitano goes down. Right there. When they shoot him, like, I don't know how many times. He has Kiriyama's Uzi. She has a pistol and they just unload on him. What is this? Oh, hey, it's Kiriyama and Kawada. Although this scene isn't actually in the movie. Where they're, you know, right next to each other facing off with the guns. They do have that face-off. 
but they're standing really far apart and he's blind and there's fire everywhere so this must be like just for uh for the hell of it for press or whatever there's Mitsuko and her evil ass this is when uh the girl gets the advantage on Mitsuko but she's like she, she's calling her a slut and telling her she's a horrible person she's like kicking her on the ground and Mitsuko spins around and uses the stun gun to uh, shock her so this girl could have killed Mitsuko right here she had the advantage she took her weapon away from her and she had a gun pointed at her but she just took too damn long you know it's the classic scene where she's talking too much and she should have just shot her so I don't know what the hell Dracula has to do with Battle Royale but whatever what is this I have no idea yeah there's Gogo -Go when she busts out the uh, that like flip open knife that's when she kills that guy because see he shot her and like scratched her face and she just went fucking crazy after that <laughs> she, uh, she she warned him she's like if you don't leave you know I'm gonna I'm gonna get serious and kill you or whatever and he uh, he was obsessed with her and he didn't want to leave and then she ends up stabbing him in the dick a couple of times and then stabs him to death really nasty scene oh hey okay cosplay I guess whatever I guess he's supposed to be Kiriyama because he's got the sword but uh, anyways good movie well worth watching I liked it I liked it quite a bit two thumbs up uh, <laughs> very very cool uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I highly, I highly recommend it. If nothing else, because interesting shit happens, you know? <laughs> and, you know, it takes the, the premise and it doesn't fuck it up. It handles it well. So, good stuff. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.